Decision Plus has been and still is a leading stock market service provider. From training to coaching, we cover it all. Try both our software as well as our coaching site completely free for 10 days without obligation. No credit card is needed to sign up for the trial. The trial subscription will be automatically canceled for you at the end. DecisionPlus.com, your stock market service center. Real-time coaching has been created. We search and classify critical reports and technical movements. You can visualize or hear the best buying and selling opportunities. Get real-time advice all day long and three live coaching shows per day. Let us do the work and save your time for trading. Try MarketGurus.tv free without obligation for 10 days in the menus above. Market Vision Plus is the trading companion of so many investors. Make your fundamental and technical analysis easy with Canada's number one stock market decision making software. Research, decide, and follow your positions with Market Vision Plus. See the menus just above this program and try Market Vision Plus for 10 days without any obligation after the show. When it comes to day trading, Trader Plus is the right tool. Track 50 quotes simultaneously. Create dozens of quick lists. Display as many as 30 real-time intraday charts at the same time. Watch the action with candlesticks or bar charts as fast as 10 seconds. See the market by sectors. Use the chart models already prepared for you. Try Trader Plus for 10 days in the menu above without any obligation. Hello everybody, welcome to the Swing Trading Show. Today we're Monday, April 13, 2015. The question bar is open, folks. If ever you have any questions, feel free to ask them. We're also gonna take out the free trial uh, page there so you can access to the a full, you can have, you can see the show on a full page. Now, with the market situation today, where are we, what are we doing? Markets at opening rose, but since then have stayed flat. We believe that today though, the best uh, strategy uh, is to be cautious in the terms of the buying signals and also the shorting signals that we have in the market simply because throughout this week we're going to have the earnings seasons and a ton of in economic indicators and the earnings seasons and the economic indicators we believe will determine can the u.s index go above their top of march on the nasdaq on the dow jones and can the tsx2 can it continue its increase? Actually, on the TSX, it's definitely more likely that we might have the beginning of a stabilization phase. Look at the energy sector on the TSX, though. It has been a sector that rose at opening, but since it reached that top again, it stabilized. So the stabilization phase that we had last week on the energy sector is confirming itself more and more. We did, I did a YouTube Chronicle last week about it, saying that if you bought some positions in the energy sector when the bullish cycle started around April 1st, April 2nd, well, you should continue to hold on to your positions if you have already taken some profits on those positions on the energy sector because we're still neutral. The only sector that remains really weak on the TSX is the mining sector, clearly reversing a, its upward trend. It's starting a bearish a cycle. Tech resources is one of the uh, strongest breakdown in the market, though. Tech, uh, the only thing is that uh, I only see a slight uh, bullish divergence there, so which means that it's not a, a deal short opportunity because look at this. This low, we're going lower than that low here, while the histogram, which is of this one, is not as low as the one that we had here. So this is that what I call a b bear bullish divergence. Also, in terms of the uh, oversold situation, we're near the oversold situation. So which makes tech resources not of a as great short opportunity by looking at those two technical indicators. Hudby Minerals as well is having a slight correction. On the American markets, really the sector 
that there are sectors that are standing out that we've talked about in marketgurus.tv, there are three sectors. First of all, there's the seller stocks, where there's a lot of bullish cycle on the seller sector, a lot of breakouts in the seller energy stocks. There's also the airline sector, where we have some breakouts, and there is the healthcare sector. And if you want access to all those lists, it's all on marketgurus.tv that you can have access for free for 10 days. But I'm gonna show you some stocks, some stocks out of those sectors. But before we talk about those sectors and those stocks, let's take a look, let's make a follow up on the maritime and transportation sector. Last week, it was a sector that was standing out. Uh, I remember there was NAT that I've talked about on the show too as well. NAT remains uh, neutral, could break out. It's actually a stock that we have among our analyst choice portfolio. I also did a YouTube chronicle when there was a movement in the maritime sector on April, on March 18. I've talked about that stock. I said it was a market grows that TV. So if you bought that stock, definitely you're in a great situation. Uh, Matson Tech could be a breakout higher than 42.72. TOO on New York higher than 23.30. It's gonna be a buying signal. Elsewhere, we have TK Tankers. It was a buying signal on Friday though, but you were trend trading that stock because you bought that stock when it tested its upward trend. So as long as it remains above 575, which corresponds to that upward trend there, you hold on to TK Tankers. Elsewhere, FRO, it was our day trend of the day on Friday. Today, the stock has remained active, but since then, the stock rose and had a wave of sellers that came. So this is why it's important on those stocks, if you buy them, to quickly take some profits on those positions on the maritime and transportation sector. And if we take a look at the seller sector, there are some new additional breakouts, SOL. There is Jazzo, which is also a nice breakout with an exit point at 950. Canadian seller as well is a breakout. Uh, you actually have to put your exit point when the stock reverses this upward trend. So below 3307, 3316, that's the exit point on a stock like Canadian seller. So some seller stocks, some stocks also in the maritime and transportation sector. And if we continue here with some stocks in the airline, there's JetBlue that is clearly breaking out with an exit point at 1866. And some stocks could start a breakout though, such as Southwest Airline, but only higher than 4357. So this is what we have in the US. We saw the airline stocks where some of them are breaking out. JetBlue is the only one that is standing out. Some stocks in the seller sector and the pursuit of the bullish cycle among maritime and transportation stocks that we talked about last week and that was published on marketgurus.tv. Now let's get into the movement that we have today in the US where there are several breakouts. And this is why I said you have to remain cautious. For instance, if we take a look here at the biotech and pharmaceutical sector, we have several breakouts in that sector. Stocks like Merrimack Pharmaceuticals, second arm breaking out, GW Pharmaceuticals, Replogen, all those stocks are all buying signals. But what I'd like to see is to see, can a market throughout the day, can at least the NASDAQ maintain its gains? If I see the NASDAQ going below 5,000 points though, I definitely cannot believe in a movement like that. I'd rather get in on the second day movement, either tomorrow, if I can see the NASDAQ maintain that increase, because even if a lot of biotech and pharmaceutical stocks are breaking out, we have been reluctant on Market Guru's ITV to recommend right now a none of this choice. We'd rather see how the markets are going to play out and then recommend a pick among that sector if we see that the markets can maintain its increase. But also, even if we're going to recommend a position on that sector though, it has to be a half position because the earning seasons that will start, the economic indicators, definitely those are something that might make the upward momentum that we had over the last few weeks totally fade away. Now, let's take the only major news that we have today, folks, I uh, just want to bring to your attention, it's a, a merger between two gold companies, Alamos Gold and Orico Gold. They will merge, it's a friendly deal, it's an all-share transaction. Um, so this is the only news uh, that we have on a stock on the, on the uh, gold sector. Now, B HGD, that's a question from Bert from uh, last week, I think. HGD, you bought at 11.71. Okay, so you bought here. Uh, you should continue to hold on to HGD. 10.70, 10.65, it's the exit point on HGD. So there's no need to get rid of it uh, for HGD. Look at gold, though. Gold still remains within a neutral cycle. So, so far, I don't think you should get rid of HGD at all. We still have some selling pressure on gold. So even if HGD is not performing as much, but uh, we need to see gold going below 114, 113 
to be able to take some profit on us ETF like HGD. So as long as HGD remains above 1070, 1065, you hold on to it, uh, Bird. Uh, now, actually, they say, should I buy HVU? Um, no, sh should not buy HVU. Look. Um, th th there's no need to buy HVU right now because the ETF has been going down. You cannot say that because the ETF has been going down for the last five, six days, let me buy it. No, you have to also respect the technical pattern, which means that if you want to buy an ETF like this, for like HVU, first of all, you have to look at the market situation. Markets so far, even if they're losing slightly the momentum, they remain positive. So why should you buy HVU? Investors are not, bu are not buying as much of put options to protect themselves. By looking at the market, they seem to be cautious, yes, but not bearish. So why would you buy HVU, knowing that the ETF continues to maintain its downward trend, is, is, has not even show any signs of reversing it, so there's no need to buy HVU right now. Uh, you could say, oh, look, maybe it's reaching a bottom, but we cannot say that this one is only gonna be a, this is gonna be a, a clear bottom for HVU. And will that bottom allow you to make a 5, 6, or 10% to be able to quickly take some profit on HVU? Not so sure about that. So I don't think that HVU represents a buy because when a stock or ETF continues to maintain its downward trend, definitely, it's definitely not an ETF I'd like to uh, buy. Unless if I see the stock testing an important support that has been tested multiple times, I might consider. But right now, we don't have those conditions on HVU. And look at the markets, though slightly losing the momentum, but they still maintain their gains. And this is something that's not positive for HVU. Uh, now, one question from Paul here. Uh, you bought GERN. Okay, it's a NASDAQ GERN. Uh, you bought at 344 and 417. Sell or keep before news tomorrow? Well, it depends on your risk aversion, Paul. You know, this is a, this is a decision um, I would say you have to take yourself. Um, uh, if you can make a 5 or 6% on that stock, I think it's wise to take some profit and not be greedy, right? If there's a news tomorrow, um, they're in the healthcare sector. So if ever there's an FDA approval that's negative, that stock can take a pounding. So to be safe, if I was in your position, I'd at least take some profit on a stock like that. Find answers to your questions by emailing your host at btm at decisionplus.com. Five good reasons to manage your investments with National Bank Direct Brokerage. Commission fees fixed at $9.95 anytime for all clients and starting at only $6.95 for active investors. No administrative fees if you hold at least $20,000 in your accounts. Registered accounts available in U.S. currency. Powerful tools to help you manage your portfolio. Award-winning customer service and satisfaction levels amongst the highest in the industry. To learn more, visit nbdb.ca or call us now. Real-time coaching has been created. We search and classify critical reports and technical movements. You can visualize or hear the best buying and selling opportunities. Get real-time advice all day long and three live coaching shows per day. Let us do the work and save your time for trading. Try MarketGurus.tv free without obligation for 10 days in the menus above. So welcome back, folks. Um, just here, I'm just going to go to a website. Um, which section is it again? Okay. okay. So welcome back. So now, as I said, for GRN, I think you can either close that position totally or take some profit. It depends on your risk tolerance, Paul. Um, especially with the FDA tomorrow, you can have negative surprises on a stock like that. Now, Z has a question. Is there a Canadian ETF for Europe and Japan? Uh, well, we don't know a Canadian uh, a ETF that allows you to track Europe or Japan that's trading on the TSX. The ones that we know are the ones that are in the New York. So those are the ones that we use, actually. But on um, market, on decisionplus.com, look, there's a list that we have done of the most active, uh, bullish, and uh, bearish ETF. So if you go to in the French section of the show, just click on the French here, French, you choose French, and you go to Formation, you look at List de FNB. 
you take a look at it, it's also in English too. We also have it in English as well. Uh, if we take a look at this education ETF list. So take a look at this. You'll be able to see what are the most active ETF on New York and also on the TSX and the sector that they track. So hope this will be uh, helpful for you, Z. But I don't know personally, or we don't know here, uh, ETF that's trading on the TSX that tracks Europe or Japan. Now, IMO. Bert bought IMO. We bought at 54.01 today. Resistance and support, please. So you bought a stock in the energy sector, IMO, when the stock has been going on for several days. Okay, you trend trading. That's what you're doing. Now, where's the resistance? Well, um, I, I, we cannot talk about resistance right now uh, because the resistance was there, right? We cannot consider this as a resistance. Now, you bought at 54.01. I don't think it was the appropriate timing to do so because look how the cycle has been going up for so long for IMO, right? So on that one, um, it was not appropriate timing. Now, what you should do to say, what are my targets? What I, adv what I would advise you to do is to put a Fibonacci retracement because this cannot be considered as a resistance because this has not been tested many times to be considered as a resistance. So if you put a retracement from that top to that bottom, so we went above the 61.8% retracement, which means that right now, as for your strategy to exit IMO, will be whenever the stock reverses that upward trend. So let's put an upward trend going from the bottom of March 13, connecting all those bottoms that we had ever since, and then you have your upward trend. So I would say that if ever IMO goes below, let's say 5250, that would be the reversal of this upward trend for IMO. Now, what would be the targets on a stock like that? Well, I think it's, uh, it's more likely that we might have a pause because look, volumes are declining, the stock is overbought, right? And uh, we went also above the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement, which is a sign that we might have a pause sooner. I think we could actually have a stabilization phase, but the thing is, is that the energy sector is still not in a bearish cycle, it's just neutral. So uh, maybe the entry point on that stock, you have to remain a little bit more patient before taking some profit. You're not in a position where you can take some profit. So, so far, I think that I will continue to hold on to it. If you, you are not, I cannot give you a support and a resistance because they were around here, right? As a target, I think that IMO, it's tough to put one because we went above the 61.8. I believe with this overbought situation and with the weakening volume, we're going to have a pause. Now, as your exit point, I think that if ever the stock reverse this upward trend, because that's what you're doing, you are trend trading IMO around 52.50, 52.40, that'll be the point where you could get out on a stock like IMO. But it was not the ideal timing to get it into a stock like that. Now, is it a good time to buy GIB.A? Well, GIB.A, it's a stock that we have on Market Grooves, that's TV, among our analyst shorts portfolio. We bought it on April 7. Uh, if you want to buy it, I don't, I don't mind. It's, uh, it's, it's still an entry point on, uh, on GIB.A, right? Uh, and the thing is, as long as the stock stays above 52.50, there's no reason to get out of it. As concerning WGA, well, no, no. Why WGA? Look, look, Mark. There's all that downward trend that is there on the stock like that. Okay, we're reaching a bottom here, but okay. You know what you could do? is that if ever I see a stochastic towards the 30%, 40%, I might consider that as a potential buy. But it's going to be a short-term trade mark for a stock like that. Around 28, 29, we could have a pause on a stock like that. As an exit point, 26.91 for WestJet Airlines. But I need a bigger confirmation for the stochastics, 93 stochastics around the 30% range to confirm that. Now, as for the day trade of the day, it's a stock in the seller sector. It's SOL. Uh, now you see we had a, a big profit-taking opportunity on a stock like that. We had one entry point here, one there, one there. Now a big wave of profit-taking opportunity. So the other entry point becomes whenever the stock reverses this downward trend higher than 177 on a stock like SOL. So that has been our day trade of the day. But for swing traders, 
Well, and for the seller, for the seller stocks, though, uh, if you buy that stock, your, your target now becomes two bucks until this 200-day moving average for SOL on New York. But 176 to two bucks, it's not even 10% on a stock like that. So overall, folks, we do have markets that are calm ahead of the earnings seasons that will start tomorrow and the important economic indicators that will be released throughout this week. We believe you should remain cautious, even if some stocks in the seller sector like SOL, some stocks in the airline sector like JetBlue, a lot of stocks in the healthcare sector are breaking out. We believe that you should not rush your move to open some positions on those sectors, but to rather uh, see if throughout the day can markets at least uh, maintain their upward momentum and even if they do go with a half positions on those stocks that's important concerning the energy sector we have a neutral phase a stock like IMO that Bert bought I believe you should continue to keep that positions because the sector remains neutral but IMO as I said you have to be clear that your exit point whenever the stock reverses this upward trend you have to get out Bert that's the strategy that's the discipline you need to have on a stock like that but overall we think that the best strategy we'll see will remain how the markets are going to interpret the earnings seasons and the indicators to see if they can confirm the strength of the rally if they do we're going to have some additional breakouts and we'll, be, we'll feel more comfortable to recommend some additional long positions in our analyst shares portfolio on marketgurus.tv so that's it, folks. See you tomorrow on the Swing Trading Show on uh, DecisionPlus.com.